Hi class, today I'm going to do this video to talk about active reading. In your first set of readings in our textbooks, you read about active reading, you read about annotating and previewing the text. So some of this is going to be review, and I wanted to make this video because this is such an important skill for our class that you practice good reading strategies to help improve your comprehension of the text we're going to be reading. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the reading process. What does active reading mean? All right, you learned in the text that reading should be a conversation between you and the text. And so as you're practicing active reading, one, I'm gonna do the second bullet and then the first bullet. The first bullet or the second bullet is self-explanatory, right? Active reading means that you're reading with a pen and a highlighter in your hand, that you're taking notes as you read so that you can have, um, it'll help you remember the text and you have a record to go back to. But active reading is also something called metacognitive. Metacognitive means that you're thinking about what you're thinking about, all right? So I know that sounds weird, but sometimes when you're reading, right, you're, you wanna be checking in with yourself about what is this, how are you feeling? How is the reading making you feel? Are you taking in the information? Are you understanding it? Or maybe your stomach rumbled and you're thinking about, gosh, I'm hungry and I wanna go get Chick-fil-A for lunch, all right? So if you're aware of what thoughts are going on in your head while you're reading, it's going to make it easier for you to comprehend, right? So when your stomach growls and you start thinking about Chick-fil-A, you can quickly bring yourself back on task and say, let me finish this reading and then I'll think about getting Chick-fil-A, right? And so instead of thinking about distractions, hopefully you're also thinking about what you're reading and saying, oh, I agree with that, or I don't agree with that, or that makes me mad, or that makes me wonder if that could even be right. Okay, so that's metacognitive, thinking about what you're thinking about while you're reading. Why is it important to practice ap uh, active reading? Because you want to be able to comprehend and read, um, comprehend everything that you understand, right? You're probably reading something for a purpose in college, and it's something that you're going to want to understand and learn. And so you want to make sure that you're doing that. And active reading will help you make sure that you do comprehend what you read so that you're not wasting your time, right? Because we've all had that experience when we sat and read a text for, you know, a whole text through, our eyes went over every word on the page. And then we get to the end and we're like, mm, I don't know if I know what that was even about. All right, so that's wasting your time. And so if you practice active reading, hopefully you won't have that waste of time. Um, and as you're reading, you wanna set your purpose. Why are you reading this? Okay, if you have a purpose for reading, then you wanna read it actively so that you can meet that purpose. Okay, so active reading involves a whole process of reading, right? Well, later on in the semester, we'll talk about the writing process, but right now we're focusing on first the reading process, and it is a process, and maybe you've never thought of it that way. All right, so before you read, as soon as you get something, um, first thing you wanna do is preview the text, right? And we read about this in the homework that you did um, during week one. And so when you preview the text, you're just looking to see how long is the text? Um, are there any text features like headings or charts or pictures or bolded words or things like that? And then you also wanna think about what genre is this, right? Is it a piece of nonfiction? Is it a textbook? Is it a story, a narrative, a novel? Okay, because all of that is going to help you think about how you're going to read it. All right, next thing you wanna do is think about whatever the topic is, right? You've previewed the text, you've looked, got a good idea about maybe what it's gonna be about, all right? Next thing you wanna do is think about what you already know about this topic. It's called activating your schema, right? It's basically opening up that drawer in your brain for new information to go into. Um, and so you want to think about what you know about this topic to prepare your brain for learning. Also, you wanna prepare yourself thinking about this is something I've never heard of, you know, I don't know, maybe the first time you learn about osmosis in a science class, you're like, I've never even heard that word. I have no idea what it is. All right, then you're going to be preparing your brain for new learning. And it's also, as you set a purpose for reading, you're going to have to set the purpose of like, this is something I'm really not familiar with. And so you're preparing um, your brain and even the way you read to get brand new information, right? If it's something we don't know anything about, then it's probably going to take us a little bit longer to read about and to really understand. Okay, um, continuing with setting your purpose for reading. 
If you have a purpose for reading, it's going to have, help you to stay engaged with that reading, right? Sometimes a teacher is going to give you that purpose. They're going to say, read this, we're going to have a quiz on it. Or in our English class, we'll say, read this article, you're going to use it as support for an essay that you're going to write. So yes, those are part of your purposes, right? But even so, with a quiz, you're like, but I don't know what part of this I'm going to be quizzed on. Okay, so something you can do to set a purpose for yourself is to make up questions. Ask yourself questions about what do you want to learn from this reading. You might say, how do I do that if I don't know what the reading is about? Well, this is where, where we're going to be using those text features, right? If there's headings, if there's a title, use those things for to create questions. Um, and so, you know, if it's the process of osmosis, okay. What is the process of osmosis? How does this work? What does that word osmosis mean? Okay. Ask yourself questions about what you want to learn from this reading. That way you have a purpose. You're looking for the answers as you read. That will help you stay engaged with the text. All right. Another thing before you read is think about how and when you will read. It's important to think about what environment you read best in. I know people who read with music on. I can't read with music on. That would It's too many things going on for me. Um, but some people need to have music on to help them concentrate. So think about that. Do you need that? Do you need to be in a place where it's quiet, where you can concentrate? Or are you good at setting, you know, shutting out all the sounds around you? So think about what environment you want to be in when you read it. Then also think about when you'll have time to read it. When you've previewed the text, you see how long it is. Think about, can I read this all in one sitting? Setting, sitting, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, be honest with yourself, right? Most of us don't have the reading attention span that we used to because we're used to getting short bits of information because of the internet. And so maybe you can only read for about 15 minutes at a time. So think about that. All right, I'm going to read for 15 minutes. I want to give myself a break. Maybe I'll play a video game quick on my phone, give myself 15 minutes break and back into the reading. So think about that, how much time realistically it's going to take you to get the reading done. It might be, you know, if it's a longer reading, 20 or so pages, you might say, I'm going to read 10 pages today and I'm going to read 10 pages tomorrow. So all these things should happen before you even start reading. During the reading, okay, as we learned in our text, you should think of the reading as a conversation, right? You're not just getting the information from whatever source you have, you're interacting with it, okay? And so interacting with it means that you're reacting to what you read. You're saying sometimes, and I'll even do this in the margins, I'll write like, wow, or is this even true? You know, I'll write things like that in the margin when I'm questioned, or maybe the text brings up a question for me and I'll write a question in the margin. Okay, so that's having a conversation with the text. Also, you wanna be checking in to make sure you're understanding. What I do is that I read maybe a couple paragraphs, a, you know, a half a page sometimes, and then I stop and I check in with myself and I do an annotation in the margin. Okay, I write down kind of a summary of that little bit that I've just read. That's what really helps me to remember what an article is about and really helps my com uh, comprehension. If I'm always checking in every little bit or so in the paper to make sure that I'm understanding. Um, also, when you're reacting with, to the text, you want to make sure that you're interacting with the text, that you're highlighting the text, that you're annotating with the text. I cannot emphasize this enough. Annotation means writing on the text, writing words on the text that you're reading. Um, and so that means either you can do it and print out an article and write in the margins, or if it's a textbook, write in the margins or use sticky notes. Um, or I'll show you in a minute how to annotate on the computer. Um, this is such an important skill. I do this in my real life. I interact with the text all the time. I highlight, I annotate. Um, I wouldn't know how to understand a text without doing it. So super important. All right, and then we already talked about taking breaks if you need them. After you're done reading, make sure you can summarize what you read, all right? You might have to go back and reread. Sometimes when I annotate, like I said, I stop and do sections. Sometimes then I have to go back and reread that section in order to um, do a small summary of that section. Sometimes you have to go back and reread a whole article very common. Don't think that it makes you less of a student. It makes you a better student to know that sometimes you have to read and reread. Um, then you should go back and review your annotations in the margins to make sure that you understood anything. If there are questions, you can jot those down. Um, that's the process for after reading.